Well, Diary of a Wimpy Kid has certainly had a bit of a busy year. For one, the book series is still going strong, with its 17th entry being released only a few months ago. And according to the book cover itself, already sold over 200 million copies before it even came out. And Greg even got to take part in this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, where he inappropriately touched Grogu. I think is the most polite way of putting it. But most importantly, and the reason why we're here, is that the second animated Disney Plus movie, Roderick Rules, came out, like, yesterday, as of me recording this right now. Now, now, for those who missed the first one last year, I can't say I blame you. I feel like not a lot of people talked about it. Either that or I just don't hang out with enough 10 year olds. But I did talk about it last year in my 2021 movies recap video where it didn't really make much of an impression on me to be honest, but it wasn't like the long haul or anything. Boom, you got shrewd. That's how Digby do it. That's how did we do it. But since this new one's just come out, and obviously since it's based on the second book, it means it's going to have a lot more Roderick in it, I felt obligated to check it out, and so I thought I may as well do a video talking about them. Now, I love the live-action Diary of the Wimpy Kid movies as much as anyone, okay? But they were never really going to last, unfortunately, because kids do this really annoying thing where they, like, age really fast. And maybe the parents and Roderick would have been fine, but like at the rate they were going, Greg and Rally would have been like 20 by the time the fifth one came out. You could already see in Dog Days that in between being an absolute dick to Rowley, Greg apparently found a lot of time to hit the gym. So obviously that's the reason they had to recast everyone by the time the fourth movie came out. Obviously with everybody loving the long haul so much, their next plan was going to be an animated special based on Cabin Fever in 2014 that would have been like half an hour, followed by their other idea of making like an animated TV series in like 2018, which I guess makes a bit more sense considering that animated characters can stay the same age forever. Either that or Jeff Kinney just thought the long haul was that bad. When Disney bought Fox, I guess it was just reworked into the animated movie, which I guess might explain why it's so short. Both of these are only like around an hour long. They do manage to fit most of the important parts in there. Greg breaking Rally's arm and them getting attacked by teenagers on Halloween. Greg and Rally's conflict near the end is like a super abridged version of what it was in the first live action movie, though they still do include that bit where Greg uses Freckly as a rebound to make Rowley jealous. You know, I'll definitely take you up on that offer sometime. <laughs> but unfortunately, that means they missed out on one of the most iconic scenes from the first movie where Rowley absolutely demolishes Greg. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. We're done. Their feud is much more, like, passive-aggressive in this one, and Greg's redemption arc at the end literally only comes in, like, the last five or so minutes, where just like in the live-action movie, he basically sacrifices his already non-existent social status by claiming that he was the one that ate the cheese, but only because his mum made him feel bad about it. So, uh, you, uh, wanna go to my place and, I don't know, play some Twisted Wizard? Yeah, that'd be good. Now you have the cheese touch, you fucking idiot. He doesn't really learn anything or become like a better person by the end, but I suppose there's still like a few movies to go before Greg even learns basic empathy. But if Rally ever steps out of line, I'll let everyone know who really ate the you know what. Uh, the comic scene still makes it in there though, thank God. Zoo wee mama. <laughs> this is funny! And of course the cheese touch still makes it in there at the very end to inspire yet another generation of middle schoolers to bully their classmates. Thank you, Jeff Kitty. I'm still not over it. Having the cheese touch hasn't been as bad as I thought. <laughs> Now, apparently these two movies are supposed to be more faithful adaptions of the book because the three live action movies made a couple changes to the plot to sort of weave everything in as far as I can remember. But I have not read the first book or Roderick Rules in a very long time. I reckon I would have been like Greg's age <laughs> the last time I actually read a book. So I'm just gonna have to rely on the Wimpy Kid lore experts in the comments to tell me whether they are or not. I only have the live action movies to go off of, so I don't really know. But from what I can remember, they're mostly very minor changes to the story in comparison to the live action movies. They shave a lot of screen time off of Frank and Susan in the first one. They're basically just there to make Greg's life harder. Even Roderick is barely in the first one at all, uh, which was the biggest disappointment for me last year. Characters like Angie and Holly are completely cut for time. They just do not exist in this universe at all. I guess it makes sense for Angie since she was a movie-only addition, as far as I'm aware, but like, I feel like Holly at least is a pretty important character to the overall story. Like that scene in Roderick Rules where Greg gets chased around without his pants on at his grandpa's place just isn't anywhere near as 
as painfully embarrassing without her. Uh, a couple other things I noticed they changed is with Roderick's party that he holds, instead of Greg and Rowley eventually getting to take part, they just get stuck in the basement the whole time. And later on, instead of Frank accidentally looking through the camera and finding out about the party, Susan finds out by literally bumping into Greg. The movie still ends with a talent show where Greg is set to be Rowley's magic act assistant, but like in the biggest shakeup to the Diary of a Wimpy right. Kid canon since the long haul, Greg is the one that gets asked to be the drummer of Loaded Diaper this time. Sorry guys, I'm in my friend's magic act. I can't get out of it. That's where Larry comes in. I just can't do that to Roderick. He's my brother. I love that he only cares about upsetting Roderick and not Rally. <laughs> Greg, you are such an asshole. And they have the scene at the end where Greg goes outside and has like a therapy session with Roderick to sort everything out. And it's kind of cute, honestly. Even though Roderick spent basically the entire movie oh, abusing him. Ow. But whatever. For all the things they missed though, they do nail one of the best and arguably most important scenes in Roderick Rules. The somebody farted scene. Look, who knows what kind of stuff Roderick is teaching Greg. Somebody farted! <laughs> I'm so proud they did it. I do love the way these two movies portray middle school as like this nightmarish hellhole way more than any of the live action movies ever did, where every single one of their classmates is a fucking future serial killer. Their school is so bad that Greg gets decked in the fucking head and one of the teachers celebrates. There is still some relatable stuff in here though, even though I'm now closer to Greg's parents' age. They do have a very accurate portrayal of teenagers in this, because I am now even more scared of them than I was when I was in middle school. We know where you go to school! The scene where Greg puts his thumb on Fregley's booger and the cheese bit at the end are still somehow just as disgusting in animated form. So I guess it's a very successful adaption and that just like the books, it made me want to fucking vomit. Roderick Rules, meanwhile, made me realize just how much charm Devin Bostick brought to the role because this movie really made me aware of how much of a fucking asshole Roderick is to Greg. It almost made me feel bad for him. Almost. Visually, the movies took a little bit of getting used to on my end from like seeing Jeff Kinney style in a 3D format because characters either always have open mouths or their mouths move around their face while they're talking on screen. I did notice they cheated though with like two of the adults who had like Muppet mouths instead. I don't know why I was paying attention to this stuff, but now you know. Overall though, honestly, I kind of like how these movies look. I think a lot of people ragged on them for the animation, but generally I think they did a pretty good job with it, except for the fact that everybody has literally Chris hair, but aside from that, I think they made the art style work pretty well in 3D, and the things that especially stood out to me were like the lighting and water effects, which were clearly rendered on a fucking PS5. They look so much better than the rest of the movie for no reason. I still stand by my point from last year though that they made Manny look even more hateable in 3D. <laughs> I'm only three. Surely it has to be on purpose to just make him like the most disgusting character design of all time. I actually really like the voice cast they chose too. Everyone sounds pretty much exactly like how you would imagine they would just from having a look at the pages of the book. Uh, it wouldn't have been out of place for me at all if not for me already having an idea in my head of how they're supposed to sound from the other movies. Greg and Rowley sound even younger than they did in the live action movies. Like they actually sound like they're 10 years old. That's all the time we get? I didn't even get to finish my juice box. How old middle school is, I don't fucking know. Roderick as well actually sounds like a teenager, which is a very brutal reminder that he's meant to be like 15 or something, so I should really stop calling him hot. I invite my friends, you invite yours. Wait, wait you do have friends, right? Yeah, I have lots of friends. There's Rally and there's Rally. Which is funny actually because his new voice actor Hunter Dillon is the same age that Devin Bostick was in the first live action movie, 19, so there you go. I can't not point this out, but for some reason in the first movie, some of Susan's lines are super muffled compared to the rest of the cast. We were worried sick about you two. Where were you boys? Snake Road. Like they sound very different to everyone else's sometimes. It's not all of her lines, but you definitely can hear it every now and then. Uh, I feel like it's a safe bet to assume that's like probably a COVID thing. So it's not really their fault, but it's just really bizarre that it made it into the final movie. So did everyone have a good day? I did keep an ear out for it in Roderick Rules, but they did fix it in that one. Obviously they very generously allowed her to record her lines outside of a washing machine this time. Anyway, these have been my very random thoughts about the two animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. Overall, I actually did didn't hate them. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say they're worth giving a shot, but I definitely think Roderick Rules is the better one of the two. Like, if you're familiar with the books or you've seen the other movies, you can probably just skip straight to the second one. So, anyway, you know how I said that Roderick Rules came out, like, yesterday as I'm filming this right now? 
They have already announced that they're doing one based on the third book as well, The Last Straw, which means this video is already going to be outdated in a year anyway, so... Great. And Jeff Kinney has basically said that he's wanting to do a movie based on all 17 of his books. And considering that he releases a new Wimpy Kid book every single year, I look forward to getting a new Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie every single year until the rest of time. Oh god.